Now we move on to my final speaker of the day and it gives me great pleasure to introduce the PCS National President, Janice Godridge. Well, hi Derek and hi everyone and thank you for coming along to uh, the rally at lunchtime today. Colleagues, I bring uh, solidarity greetings both as the President of the Union and as a striker myself. Not only from me, but from all members of the National Executive Committee who were speaking at rallies at lunchtime today across the UK, and also from Mark Sawatka, our General Secretary. Colleagues, we join colleagues and members from across the UK today, from Truro to Inverness, from Southampton to South Shields, from the Wash in the East Coast to the far west of Wales, from London, Cardiff, Brighton, Bradford, Birmingham, Liverpool, Preston, Manchester, the list goes on. There is no major town or city where members of PCS are not protesting today. And I'd like to pay tribute to every one of them who in the face of some of the most outrageous intimidation from the media and ministers have stood firm in the face of those at that bullying and have come out today. And I say to them, the truth will out, we're not going away. And for Francis Maud to continue describing what has been going on so far as negotiations is a bit like saying the Lord of the Rings is a historical textbook. The negotiations have been fantasy. When you're sitting in the same room as someone, it doesn't automatically mean that you're negotiating with them. Our members today are out on strike because the government's proposals might, uh, will mean that they work longer, get less and pay more and the government is saying that they are not prepared to negotiate on those three issues. So take those away and what's left to negotiate. Now, if a result of the protests and anger that they're seeing today, they, they come back and, and, and say they will take that off the table and have proper negotiations, then all well and good. And we'll sit down there and we'll negotiate with them and we'll come back to you with the outcome of those negotiations and you will decide whether it's acceptable uh, or not. Colleagues, I think people instinctively understand that the attack on pensions is grossly unfair, but it's also part and parcel of a cuts and privatisation programme that has been implemented by a government of millionaires that wants us to pay even more than the $1.3 billion that we've collectively handed over to the banks to bail them out of the crisis. Even in the last past day or two, the Tories have been forced into conceding that public sector pensions, our pensions, are not only sustainable, but the costs are actually falling. So scandalously, what they now try and do is try and concoct some sort of moral argument that says because private sector workers have had their pensions stolen from them, that we should suffer the same fate. I need to be absolutely clear. PCS will not allow a cabinet of millionaires to divide working people, whether they work in the public or the private sector. We utterly, we utterly reject the idea that there should be any division between public and private sector workers. This is not a race to the bottom. It's about the fundamental right in any civilised society that everyone should be entitled to a fair pension. And I say this, to any member of a private sector company here or listening. Join a union, organise in that union, demand fair pensions, demand fair conditions, help us expose the hypocrisy that means that half of companies that have closed their final salary scheme to new entrants still allow new directors to join the boardroom final salary scheme. There's only one group in this that's all together, and that's ordinary working folk, whether you work in the private or the public sector. Join us in standing together for workers' pensions, and we'll be there standing firm in solidarity with your rights, as I believe you're here today. Colleagues, I think people also instinctively understand that if this attack goes through unchallenged, they'll just come back for more. Our society is becoming increasingly brutalised. The Westminster government is dismantling the right to free education and health care. But bankers and company executives are raking in bonuses, paying themselves even more and telling ourselves that we all have to make sacrifices. So why is this race to the bottom happening? Well, the fact of the matter is 
there is a political consensus among all the major parties, including Scotland, that there's no alternative to the market and that cuts are necessary and inevitable. And that is the great lie of modern times. The reality is that these cuts are political, they're ideological, they're chosen to bring them in, and there is an alternative based on tax justice, job creation and investment, including public sector investment. Every day, every day the myths that this government used to justify these cuts are evaporating. We've got the highest debt ever. No, we haven't. Britain's got the largest public sector. That's rubbish. Privatisation is more efficient and cheaper. That's a complete lie. We've got the worst debt of all countries. Not true. It's the lowest of all G8 countries at historically low levels. And by the way, public sector spending is not a debt. It's not some grubby little guilty secret. It's an investment in people, in services and communities. It stimulates and drives the economy for every job cut in the public sector. At least one and probably two will go in the private sector. Colleagues, the government here wants to do precisely what's happening in Greece and Ireland. The simple fact is that the Tories want public sector pensions reformed in order to make the privatisation of services afford affordable. Their philosophy is from each according to their vulnerability to each according to, our, to their greed. The average civil service pension is a mere £4,200, hardly gold plated. We are not going to allow them to double or treble our contributions, make us work till 65 and cut the value of our pension from 20 to 50%. That's not reform, there's a word for it and it's called robbery. So what type of people are they? What type of people are they who are recommending it to us? Well, there's a despicable John Hutton, the man who let credibility to pensions robbery, a man who detests trade unions and is awash with corporate sponsorships, particularly from the American nuclear industry. And then, of course, there's Cabinet Office Secretary Francis Maud, the well-heeled Tory grandee who only a few years ago was exposed by the Daily Telegraph to trying to fiddle his expenses by claiming a second home and a yards for his main evidence. He's got a total of four homes, including one in France. Well, we've got a simple message for you. Keep your grubby, thieving hands off our pensions. You're a disgrace. <laughs> Colleagues, today is not a one-day protest. It's the first shot in a major campaign that will see between three to five million public sector workers take industrial action unless this issue is, in, unless this issue is resolved. And in coming to a conclusion, I'd ask us to draw our inspiration from the struggles waged in the Arab world for freedom and democracy in terms of believing that we can succeed in our aims. Let's not forget, on the 1st of December, the governing party in Egypt announced they had won 96% of the vote in their elections. Yet three months later, following the determined protests and strike action by the unions, President Mubarak was history, having fled from Cairo to a Red Sea holiday home. In Greece, you can see the protests there where they face a bitter battle to implement the cuts following the close decision yesterday. But in the final analysis, the only way to defeat this government of spivs and gangsters is to organise widespread coordinated industrial action. The British TUC need to defend our interests of working people in the same way the Tories and Liberals defend those of the bankers and the multinationals. And they should unequivocally condemn the shameful, cowardly and treacherous comments made by, by, by Labour leader Ed Miliband, who in his short leadership, in his short leadership, has condemned every action by workers to decide are you on. Don't describe this, this strike as a mistake. Don't echo the words of the multi-millionaire uh, Cameron. Colleagues, Desmond Tutu once said that freedom translates into being able to live in a decent home and have a good job. To be able to send your children to school and have accessible health care. If not, the vote is useless. And that's what our opposition to the government's policies is really about. We're saying loud and clear, everyone deserves a decent standard of living for themselves and their family. The coalition government stand in the way of securing this, so they have to go. Because unlike the bankers and the professional politicians, we care about what type of society we live in. We want to see everyone treated with dignity and respect. I'm proud of every PCS member today. I'm proud of all our reps who have organised this action. 
We as a leadership will work tirelessly to unite all public sector unions into our action. And the message to anyone today is loud and clear. If you don't negotiate properly, we'll be back. And we won't be in our thousands, we'll be in our millions. Thank you.